In this video we're going to take a look at one of the web challenges from Dice CTF which is called Knock Knock and the description says Knock Knock who's there another pace bin. We've got a server to connect to so we'll open that up in another tab and we've got some files to download, we've got a docker file and we've got the source code as well so we can download that. Let's open it up in Codium and we'll take a look at this shortly but let's just go and have a quick look at the website itself. So we have this mini paste bin style site. As you can see here we can enter something in, let's just say hello, create, and it redirects us to another page. You can see that we now have this note ID at the top of 3285 and then we've got this long token which looks like some kind of hash. If we go over to Burp Suite we can see the post requests that were sent to create that note. So the data was hello and then it redirected to the following location and made a get request on that. So we might want to go back and try to see if we can put a script in here, seeing as it's reflecting whatever we enter on the next page. If we say alert, do we get a box popping up? And we do. Which means that what we could actually do here, I'm just going to copy over a basic script to make a connection to a web server. If we were to start a web server on our local system, let me do web up, so I'm running a HTTP server on port 80 and I can use ngrok to expose this, so let's do ngrok HTTP 80 you can use something like request bin to do this as well but basically this will expose the local host on port 80 to the internet so that we can actually provide a site here that this is going to be able to connect back to so if we update this and then click create page loads, nothing happens but if we go back to our ngrok and back to our web server, we can actually see that it made the connection. It was looking for cookie.php, which I don't actually have on the desktop, so it didn't find it. And it didn't supply anything here with as a cookie. So if we go back and have a look at the command that we entered, we were trying to grab document.cookie. In this case, if we go and have a look at the... Let's open up our developer tools. Have a look in the storage. And we don't actually have any cookies here. So we could go ahead and say document.cookie equals set our cookie and then if we try to access the page again let's go back and have a look at our server and this time you can see that it actually did send the cookie along so quite often if you see an XSS challenge we can supply a URL like this to an admin to try and steal the cookie which is likely to be the flag in this case what's interesting is we could actually provide this URL to somebody else to try and steal their cookie. Obviously there's no cookie set but there's a lot of things you can do with JavaScript which I'm not demonstrating here. Um, so for example if another player was able to get hold of this ID and this token and tried to access the page then that JavaScript would trigger for them as well. Or if you were to send this URL to one of the CTF admins and say can you have a look at this? It doesn't seem to be working properly. It would also run on their system if they were to decide to click on it. But anyway, that's not really related to the challenge. I just thought I'd demonstrate that. And let's go and take a look at the source code to try and find out what our actual goal is here. Okay, so we have this Node.js application. You can see here we've got this class database with some functions and stuff in it. And down here is creating an object, it's creating an instance of the database, it's creating a note and the note is being provided the flag from the environment variable as a as the data. So whenever we made whenever we pasted something here, this was the data that went through in Burp Suite. So we know that the first note that was created in the database was belonging to well, let's say it's belonging to the admin and it contains the flag. So we need to have a look and see how the note is generated then. So this create note is the function right here. It takes in the data. It's using this dot notes dot length. So we have our notes up here. Every time a new note is created, it's going to be added to this list. So essentially it's sequ sequential. This is three, two, nine, two. The next note that's created will be three, two, nine, three, etc. The problem is we can't just try to access the first note as zero or one because we also need the token. Actually, let's try to access that, see what we get. So yeah, it comes back with an invalid token. So let's try and see how this token is generated and see if we can work out what the correct token is for the ID zero, which will contain that flag. 
And if we go back here, we can see then we create the note. It has the ID based on whatever the current note is in this list. It's going to push the data to the notes and then it's going to return ID and token, which is calling generate token, passing in the ID. And that function is down here, so we can see it's returning crypto.createHMAC. HMAC is just a hashed message authentication code, so you can see here it takes in the algorithm and the key, so it's doing SHA256 hash, and it's using this dot secret as the key, so that's defined up here, secret dash, and then the crypto dot random UUID, which we can see is imported from this library. So it's basically going to take the ID, in our case a zero, it's going to generate the token by hashing it as a SHA256 hash with the secret, and then it's going to bring back the hex value. So the only thing that we're missing here is this secret value. If we can retrieve the secret value, then we can generate our own token using the HMAC algorithm with the SHA256 setting and that secret value and the ID which we know is going to be zero. Providing we do that, we'll be able to call get note and it's going to check to make sure that the token that we provided matches what it should do. It's going to generate a new token and compare them. And if it does, it'll bring back our note. There's some other code down here, it's not really important, it's just the code for creating a note if we make a post request and for retrieving notes with a get request. But really what we want to focus on is getting this secret value. And there's an issue with the way that this has been written, so we're calling a function which is in the crypto library. But when we're calling a function we should use these brackets to show that we're invoking the function rather than just referencing it. So in this case that wasn't provided, meaning this should have the same value each time. Now what I actually tried to do here was take a copy of this library. Let's create a new file, new.js. We're importing the crypto library and then we're also going to try to print this out. So we can just say console.log and paste this in. And then if we run node new.js it should print a value, but what we get here is secret undefined. I'm not too sure why this is. I do have the crypto library installed and I had a similar issue whenever I tried to use an online service. I normally would use tryitonline.run which you can enter code for a variety of different languages and it'll compile it and run it online. So in this case let's go and have a look at Node. Node.js, we paste in that code, run the program, we get the same thing here. Let's go and have a look. Node.js online try some other tools. So we've got one here, Node.js online compiler, we'll try to run it there. Okay, no output at all there. Let's try it with this one. And this is the only one which actually returned the function. So you can see it's actually brought back the code for the function rather than generating a value. If we add the brackets there, you'll see that it comes back with what it should do, which is a different value each time. Each time we run that, we've got a new value. So what we can do is just go ahead and say, this is the code that we want. So we're gonna to want to try and encode this. Let's make it into base64. And you could do this in Python, or you can take it to something like Cyberchef, which I quite often use for this sort of stuff. We can go ahead and say we want to do a HMAC, just search for it. We can select the hashing function, which we know is SHA256. If we go back and double check the code. SHA256 is taking in this dot secret, so we're gonna give the secret, make sure it's in the correct format, base64, and then the ID, which is gonna be zero. So now if we take this value and go back to our challenge, let's change the token Let's try to load the page, and this time we get the flag. So let me know if you know why I was getting the undefined message in the online compilers, and whenever I was trying this locally, because I'm not too sure what that was about. And I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Thanks.